What happens when over a million tons of radioactive wastewater are released into the ocean? The world will find out starting in 2022. Faced with a radioactive wastewater buildup from the decade-old Fukushima disaster, Japan has no choice. An estimated 1.2 million tons of treated radioactive wastewater is being stored in over 1,000 steel tanks by Japan's nuclear power plant operator, TEPCO. But that volume is growing by the day, and the tanks are bursting at the seams. By the summer of 2022, Japan will run out of storage space. That radioactive wastewater must go somewhere. And for now, the only solution is the Pacific Ocean. The Fukushima disaster struck in March 2011 when an earthquake caused a 15-meter tsunami, flooding emergency generators and disabling the cooling mechanisms of three Fukushima Daiichi reactors. Three of the nuclear cores essentially melted, and four others were damaged beyond repair. As radiation spewed into the air and onto nearby rooftops, over 200,000 people fled the area or were evacuated. Those people were finally allowed to return home in March 2020. Now, a new Fukushima chapter must begin, one that some say could unleash a different horror on the entire planet. TEPCO will release the radioactive wastewater into the Pacific Ocean, slowly, over three decades. TEPCO insists that its plan is sound. The company says it has developed a system for removing radioactive substances from the water, but experts argue that the radioactive isotope tritium is simply too difficult to remove, and that isotope will be released into the Pacific along with the rest of the wastewater. The radiation levels from the steel storage tanks are also still high enough to be a safety threat to the workers. There's no question that Japan must act quickly. Though it happened a decade ago, the Fukushima disaster is far from over. In addition to the wastewater crisis, TEPCO must also continue the process of decommissioning Fukushima Daiichi, a complex undertaking that could span 40 years and cost more than $75 billion. The main challenge will be removing 800 tons of fuel from the three melted reactors. In the meantime, the plan to release radioactive wastewater into the Pacific over the course of three decades has Japanese and South Korean fishermen up in arms. Even the rumor of contamination could destroy the fishing trade. History will back them up. The specter of Fukushima still haunts the industry even without the addition of radioactive wastewater. South Korea is now in its seventh year of a ban on seafood harvested from the area. With radioactive wastewater added to the equation, Japanese fishermen could lose more market. But they're fighting against impossible odds because Fukushima's liquid fallout has nowhere else to go.